Earth is slowing down and scientists warn major earthquakes ahead like we have never seen before. Pole shift, Planet X, Planet 9, Planet 2342, CERN, nuclear or high power energy weapons testing. I don't know. I do have a lot of scientific data to present to you, though. And this podcast is brought to you by Virtual Shield. It is a VPN designed from the ground up to protect your data from big data spies. Now, also, they're offering a promotion right now, Black Friday special, 30% discount. Use the link, Virtual Shield slash Leak Project. There's a program called Identisafe, which if you're like me, ever wondering if somebody could voyeurously be listening in on your microphone that's built into your camera or your computer or your camera, maybe somebody's watching you through that webcam when you least expect it. I know a lot of people that put something over their camera when they're on the computer. This program, it's like a, it's a few bucks a month. You can block your microphone and your web camera, completely disable them so you don't have to worry about somebody hacking in. And there's all sorts of cool options where they've got registry cleaner, trash security, digital file shredder, and they have plans starting at less than five bucks a month. That's my shameless plug. All right, now let's get into the interesting article here that I found recently. Headlines, Earth's rotation is mysteriously slowing down. Scientists warn of major increase in earthquakes for 2018. BGR News, The Guardian, there's a multitude of mainstream news articles that are discussing this, and they got their information from a white paper that was titled a five-year forecast for increased global seismic hazard. It's by Roger Billum and Rebecca Bendick. Roger, uh, Roger's from the Geological Sciences, University of Colorado at Boulder. Rebecca is from the Department of Geosciences, University of Montana. And I'm going to share with you the article that I put together today from this information. Cliff notes here, I read through the entire paper And instead of you guys having to spend uh, a large part of your day reading that, and I don't know if you're familiar with the term decreased oblateness or lithospheric overshoot, but I'm going to discuss that with you here because those are two possible apparatuses that could be responsible for the Earth slowing down. Now, they're saying that when the Earth slows down, when these events happen, about five to six years later, there's major earthquakes. The five-year forecast for increased global seismic hazard is the name of the white paper. During the past century, there has been a 25 to 30% increase in earthquakes of a magnitude of up to seven. The correlation between Earth's angular deceleration and global seismic productivity is shown to precede seismicity by five to six years. Now, the variable rotation of the Earth is because of the exchange of angular momentum between the solid and fluid Earth such as the atmospheres, oceans, and outer core. Scientists show delayed seismic productivity is most pronounced at the equatorial latitudes of 10 degrees north minus 30 degrees south. Now, there's two possible apparatuses that could be responsible for causing the Earth to quickly slow down. Decreased oblateness and lithospheric overshoot. Historically, most... Earthquakes of up to 7 magnitude occurred near the equator in the West and East Indies. Now, a connection showing that since 1900, more than 80% of all magnitude 7 earthquakes or less on the Eastern Caribbean plate boundary have occurred five years following a maximum deceleration, including the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Now, this year marks the sixth year following a deceleration event that happened in 2011, So this would suggest that the planet has reached a level of amplified and disastrous global seismic productivity within a duration of at least five years. You can read this article directly at gsa.confex.com. The full link is right there for you to click on. Just go to my website, forums.leakproject.com. Great article. A lot of information is there. Now, here's the thing. With Yellowstone, let's talk about the Haiti quake for a minute because I know a lot of people out there, including myself, 
have you have you have either thought or wondered could that quake in Haiti have been something that was designed was orchestrated like maybe they know how to actually mess with the seismic plates a little bit by some type of frequency weapon technologies very high levels of frequency being projected into one specific place that's because you do know in Florida southern Florida they had the cleanup crew they had FEMA ready for that earthquake the day before it happened. They had drills preparing for that so they could just bounce on over there to Haiti. So how did they know about it? You know, that's why many speculated maybe they created it. Or maybe their predictive software combined with the sensors and satellites and all the data that they have, maybe they're able to predict these events to within a few days of event. Now, if that's the case, Yellowstone, thank goodness a bunch of just minor earthquakes have been going off, but the Yellowstone earthquakes are through the roof this year, absolutely through the roof. Maybe that's a blessing in disguise, a bunch of small earthquakes to help offset some of the possibilities of more of a a buildup and then the volcano the mega caldera out there that's just full of goodness, full of love. I mean, that would blanket the entire planet. That would be a very detrimental event. And maybe they found ways to kind of offset that. Maybe there's enough white hats out there, or even people that aren't white hats that just realize they don't want to live in a bunker their entire life. It's pretty nice up here. No matter how nice it is down there in their four or five star luxury resorts underground. It's still pretty awesome out here. Now, let me also share with you, let me, let me show this to you real quick. So this is a model of Saturn, oblate Saturn, whose equatorial radius is greater than its polar radius. Now, if the Earth is somehow flattening on the tops, now this is kind of like an apple. You see how it's got the poles and an openings and it's kind of like a heartbeat, it's like a frequency. And that's why I feel, the, I feel that the Earth is an oblate sphere may not be perfectly round but i also feel that it has poles on the north and the south that allow an entryway into parts of the inner earth whatever it is now there's caves in vietnam that are enormous that have entire ecosystems so the description that it's saying here basically what it's coming down to and this is the article right here the description of decreased oblateness somehow the gravity is flattening the the poles and that's causing the lithosphere to overshoot now maybe cern has something to do with it maybe these planets that have been orbiting the earth or, or i'm not orbiting the earth but orbiting the sun for who knows how long that were recently finding and discovering with these incredible telescopes that we have access to now, people like Michael Brown, astrophysicist Michael Brown, and others. And they're talking about Planet Nine that's past the Kuiper Belt, but that's so enormous and so dense, it's causing a gravitational effect on the planets in our solar system. And some speculate that it's a lot closer than they're telling us, Whether or not it is, I don't know. But could one of these planets that's getting ready, you know, that's entering perihelion or just getting closer to our planet or close enough to cause some type of effect, if you think that the moon has an effect on what we know of gravity, so a a lithospheric overshoot Imagine the top crust. Imagine the top crust somehow slowing down. And then underneath it, I think of a good way to describe this. Okay, so a lithospheric overshoot is a process whereby the equatorial lithosphere sluggishly overrides the decelerating underlying mantle westward, much as a loose cannon 
would slide upon the deck of a rolling ship. So you've got a, a ship out at sea, and then there's you know the, the old school cannon that's on the wheels, and then the, the ship's moving, and as the ship moves, then that starts to move as well. So these layers are somehow having an effect on each other. Whether or not it's the, the amount of fracking, the, um, the nuclear testing, like I brought up before, maybe CERN is having something to do with it. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a part of the natural process. There's a lot of variables. So maybe all of the above, maybe all of these are having an effect on the planet. Now, could this be a start of a pole shift? If it's the start of a pole shift, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to get nasty. Now, remember this book right here. Ooh, this book, I mean, I don't even know what they're selling for now, if you can even find one. You can find the newer copies, but this is from 1975. I feel so fortunate that I found this. No, actually, 1965. Is that right? Emerson House, Los Angeles, 1965. And it was autographed in 1972. It was autographed by Chan in 1972. And here is a cross-section of the inner Earth. And he describes how pole shifts happen. He describes how there's a reset every X amount of years that literally ob obliterates almost every living creature on the surface of the planet. Winds that get close to 1,000 miles an hour, mounds of flesh. And the way that it happens, he describes this gray matter inside of the, you know, close to the core, the outer layer of the core, somehow releases a little bit of this gray matter into the next layer, causing an atomic explosion in our Earth that causes the poles, and cut not the poles, but causes, well, eventually, causes the, the plates to move, causes a massive tidal wave that goes across the entire North American continent. I mean, this is serious. So no wonder this specific essay, because it's not really a book, it's more like an essay, was purchased up, was, was tucked away, uh, put away, lock and key, and... Recently, these files, some of them, not even all of them, uh, some of them are scrubbed out still, are declassified freedom of the information. You should read it. It's on a specific three-letter agency's website in their vault. So just look it up. Will you just look at it? Will you just look at it? Now, let's see here. Maybe I could find something. Interesting. Okay. I'm just going to, you know, I just, the first page that I pulled up here. Did you ever sit down for an evening at a card table with a thousand piece puzzle by yourself? It takes a while. We're still trying, uh, we're still trying out some of the as yet unfitted pieces in our worldwide puzzle. And we have been at the table since 49. However, even though incomplete, it shows us a graphic representation of the Earth's picture 11,500 years ago. Look at a globe of the world. Pick out longitude 90 degrees west, latitude 60 degrees north. This point is in the western part of the Hudson Bay. Now hold the globe so that 90 degrees west, 60 degrees north, is at the North Pole on the axis of rotation. This was the configuration of the world between 18,500 and 11,500 years ago. The North Polar Ice Cap formed the Laurentian Basin in Canada. The continents, however, were not quite the same. There was a huge continent in the Atlantic Ocean area which stretched from Iceland and England across the Atlantic to the Bahamas. The Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea did not exist. They were land at that time. There was another continent in the Pacific covering an area now ringed by the Hawaiian Islands, the Galapagos Easter Island, Tahiti, the Solomons, and the Caroline Islands, the province of Ceylon, held the major civilization of India, Egypt, and the Holy Land, where thriving mixtures of vegetation were thriving mixtures of vegetation and civilization. Greece, land of the Hellens, was the home of a tall, blue-eyed, blonde race with standards of science and law unmatched to this day. Boom, ladies and gentlemen. No wonder that's not in your history books. I wonder if this, this is page 31. I don't know if this is um, available yet, unless you have a physical copy. So, according to this research, over 18,000 years ago, a civilization, thriving civilization, 
tall, blue-eyed, blonde race with standards of science and law unmatched to this day. The Amazon Basin was an inland sea. Legends call it the Sea of Zares and the mouth of the Amazon River was then a wide seagoing connection between the Atlantic and Zares. The western coast of South America was not mountainous. The prehistoric city of Tiahunaku, Peru, now at 12,500 feet above the Pacific, was then at sea level. Whoa! Was then at sea level. Now, if this is true, holy freaking cow. Boom! Ladies and gentlemen, man, I gotta read this again. This is like, this is awesome. And if it's just science fiction, groovy. Well, this guy did his homework. I mean, I could, I've read a list, I've read his credentials. The guy was world renowned and he actually predicted earthquakes so good back in, let me just read this to you real quick. If you haven't re- read any or seen any of my shows previously on this, Mr. Thomas attended Dartmouth College and Columbia University, receiving the degree in electrical engineering from the latter in 1943. Um, he also, as a result of his research, Since 1949, Mr. Thomas has been recognized as a world-leading authority in the field of cataclysmic geology and its relationship to uniformitarian geology. In 59, he applied his findings to the possibility of earthquake prediction and at a seminar in November of 59, issued the results of his studies. He then accurately forecast the months, years, and locations of the major African and Chilean earthquakes of 1960, the Iranian earthquake of 62, the Yugoslavian earthquake of 63, and further predicted the California earthquake that California would have no major earthquakes for the following five years. Now, there's a lot of other stuff in there and a lot of other titles that I'm not going to get into, but seismology, earth magnetism, oceanography, radiology. So this guy was pretty pretty powerful uh, mentally. He knew his stuff. And I'm going to leave it at that. I want to thank you for being here. I will be live later. Be excellent to each other. Make sure to go to leakproject.com. If you want to become a premium member, you have access to about 14, over 1,400 podcasts. Over 100 of those are exclusive to leakproject.com. Downloadable, streamable, ad-free. Listen to them when and where you want to. Download them. So if you're taking a road trip, if you're at work, you don't have access to the internet, well, there you go. And if you go to forums.leakproject.com, you will get access to... A plethora of data you can see right here. You can also leave comments. It's a really cool forum. Bring your information. Bring your voice if you like to have your voice heard, but you're not as much into talking. You want to write it down. There's a lot of people that have been asking me to put this together now for for months. And hey, I uh, was fortunate enough to financially be able to put this together. And now it's time for you guys to help this grow. Be on the ground floor of awesome. Be excellent to each other, ladies and gentlemen. Be excellent to each other and be the change you want to see. And click that link for Virtual Shield articles that are discussing this. And they got their information from a white paper that was titled A Five-Year Forecast for Increased Global Seismic Hazard. It's by Roger Billum and Rebecca Bendick. Roger uh, Roger's from the Geological Sciences, University of Colorado at Boulder, Rebecca is from the Department of Geosciences, University of Montana. And I'm going to share with you the article that I put together today from this information. Cliff notes here, I read through the entire paper. And instead of you guys having to spend uh, a large part of your day reading that, and I don't know if you're familiar with the term decreased oblateness or lithospheric overshoot, but I'm going to discuss that with you here because those are two possible apparatuses that could be responsible for the Earth slowing down. Now, they're saying that when the Earth slows down, when these events happen, about five to six years later, there's major earthquakes. The five-year forecast for increased global seismic hazard is the name of the white paper, Drake Data Spies. Now, also, they're offering a promotion right now, Black Friday special, 30% discount. Use the link, virtual shield slash leak project. There's a program called Identisafe, which if you're like me, ever wondering if somebody could voyeurously be listening in on your microphone that's built into your camera or your computer or your camera, Maybe somebody's watching you through that webcam when you least expect it. I know a lot of people that put something over their camera when they're on the computer. 
this program, it's like a, it's a few bucks a month. You can block your microphone and your web camera, completely disable them so you don't have to worry about somebody hacking in. And there's all sorts of cool options where they've got registry cleaner, trash security, digital file shredder, and they have plans starting at less than five bucks a month. That's my shameless plug. All right, now let's get into the interesting article here that I found recently. Headlines, Earth's rotation is mysteriously slowing down. Scientists warn of major increase in earthquakes for 2018. BGR News, The Guardian, there's a multitude of mainstream news articles. The Earth is slowing down and scientists warn major earthquakes ahead like we have never seen before. Pole shift, Planet X, Planet 9, Planet 2342, CERN, nuclear or high power energy weapons testing. I don't know. I do have a lot of scientific data to present to you, though. And this podcast is brought to you by Virtual Shield. It is a VPN designed from the ground up to protect your data from big. 